All right, I wanted to do a real quick video answering this stupid nonsense that prayer is a work somehow now. I mean, it, absurd, absolutely absurd. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. We'll read these verses here. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Call upon him, you know. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right. I need to make a couple points here. Um, I'm seeing some of the just the, the most idiotic, stupid people coming out. And I heard some nitwit preacher recently say that verse 13, when it says, call upon the name of the Lord, that means believing in your heart. Um, you got to be rather stupid to make a comment like that. Why? Because the word believe is a King James Bible word and the word call is a Bible word. Okay? They're not the same word. So to say what you're doing in reality is saying you can, you can take the word call and you can cross that out and say it's actually believe. Well, then you're changing scripture. No, the word is call upon the name of the Lord. And they say, well, it doesn't mean that. And I've seen these guys too. They, they'll, they'll say, that doesn't mean that. Okay, show me more scriptures that talk about calling upon the name of the Lord. Uh, no, it doesn't. The little game doesn't work that way, right? You come out and you say, it doesn't mean that. I say, yes, it does. It, why? Because that's what it says. That's what our text says right there. You call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And you can come up with all your little, little Jesuitical arguments. What if somebody's a deaf mute? What if this and what if that? What if their mouth got sewn shut in a, because they got injured in the war or something? You know, all these little arguments, all this little stuff. Just take it for what it says. Call upon the name of the Lord. Let me show you the danger in this thing and what I really believe is really, truly the philosophy behind this, this attack um, that's come out now all of a sudden. I mean, and, and again, you realize how many people you're damning to hell? If you say calling upon the name of the Lord is a false gospel and it's whatever wicked and all this other stuff, it's, there's a spirit behind this movement. And it's not the Holy Spirit, I can guarantee you that. Psalm 145, verse 18. Psalm 145, verse 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. You know, here's the issue. Is prayer important? Yes. You are supposed to pray without ceasing, the Bible says. We're going to look at a couple other scriptures here talking about the importance of prayer. Prayer is extremely important. Okay, here's the question. When does the life of prayer begin for somebody that gets saved? You just, in your mind, you just make the decision, I'm a Christian now. Why? I've believed. I made the decision. Uh, no, you come and you call upon the name of the Lord. He has something that you need. So you call upon Him. That's common sense. All right? And these, these wicked, disgusting people out there, it just it makes me so stinking angry. Oh, call upon the name of the Lord doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean prayer because prayer is a work. You're rather idiotic, right? Oh, the adjectives and all the attitude and everything else. Yes, you see, because I speak as one that has authority. I don't change this book. And these people that come out and they say, it says call, but you can just cross that out and say believe. Well, then you're changing the word of God and you're damning yourself to hell. You're proving that you're false. Go with what the book says. You see, when you call upon the name of the Lord, that is when your prayer, your life of prayer begins. Because before then, you can say whatever you want and, and you know, oh God, please help me through this. And God, I said a little prayer for you and all this stuff. God doesn't listen to that. God does not hear the prayers of sinners, all right? But when you come out for the first time and you say, God be merciful to me, a sinner. That's when your life begins. That's when salvation starts right there when you understand that you're a sinner. When you understand, I'm not going to go to heaven if I die right now. No more self-righteousness. 
you have contrition. You're saying, I'm tired of this life of sin. I, I don't even know how to get out of it. All I know is Jesus died for me. And please, God, please, you call upon the name of the Lord. Why is that so difficult for people to understand? You say, what about sinner's prayers? What about fake sinner's prayers? Everybody, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. Well, sure. Okay? I'm not saying that you just repeat some prayer and you get in automatically. I'm saying that there has to be a heart condition, a heart change there. That's the whole point of repentance. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. It happens all at the same time. You know? Say it this way. You say, well, there's your salvation is just belief, just belief. There's only one thing, you know, these little heretics do that. Salvation is a whole lot of things that happen at one moment, all right? It's a whole lot of different things that all come together, and you say, okay, I'm a sinner. I can't stand this stinking life of sin. I want out of this. I need help. I can't help myself anymore. I, Jesus died on the cross. Wow, I, I can't see it, so I have to believe that by faith. You know, and you call upon the name of the Lord. That's salvation. And you understand the gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it talks about over there. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And these stinking heretics, they'll come out, they'll say, that doesn't mean that. You know, it's, it's awfully strange that they can't believe what's written. Confessing over here, calling upon the name of the Lord over here in Romans chapter 10, that doesn't mean calling, it means believing. So you can just cross that word call out of your Bible and put belief there. Or at least in your mind. You Maybe you don't want to do it in the Bible. That might be too obvious that you're lost. You know, just, just kind of in your mind do it. You know, just, yeah, sure. And over here when it says, unless you have believed in vain, well, that doesn't mean um, the, about, that's not in reference to the gospel, even though in context it is. And then you read about the gospel there in verses 3 and 4. You know, it doesn't mean believe in vain because you can't believe in vain. Oh, well, tell that to the atheists that were raised in these church buildings and they believed in Jesus and they, they did all the little stuff, you know, and I'm a Christian. And then later on, they turn out to hate God. Yes, you can believe in vain. Absolutely, you can believe in vain disgusting but you see here's the real point of this whole thing there are certain entities we'll say that uh, don't want you to pray they can't stand the thought of somebody praying Matthew chapter 17 verse 21 Matthew 17, verse 21. If you have an NIV, you're not going to be reading this verse because they took it out. It says, Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Jesus is talking about a very powerful devil. You need to pray and fast to get that thing out of there. And I believe, by the way, the way to cast out devils today is to tell them how to be saved. And once they get saved, the Holy Spirit moves in. The blood of Jesus Christ washes away the sins. The Holy Spirit moves in and says, Get out to the devils. It's not some special little thing that you have to have and all the little seances or deliverance or whatever else. Uh-uh. No. Happens at salvation. Genuine salvation. The point is, they aren't getting genuinely saved, so the devils aren't leaving. You know? But you see there, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Is prayer powerful? Turn back to James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Okay, are we to pray today? You say, but, but Brother Brian, I thought you say that the book of James is for the time of Jacob's trouble, for the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. James chapter 1, verse 1. Yes, I do believe that. But uh, we're supposed to pray today. So what's written about prayer here is true for us today. All right, look at the second part. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Okay, when does the prayer life start? It starts when you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. 
Can you fake that prayer? Can there, are there people that fake it? Absolutely. Are there people that fake belief? Absolutely. Absolutely. So don't give me this thing of, well, there's people that fake. You can fake all kinds of stuff. All right? A lot of fake ministers on YouTube. What I'm saying is, your life of prayer begins at salvation. But you see, these devils come out and they say, we don't want praying Christians out there. So we're going to start to make people think that prayer is a work. You don't get saved by praying. I mean, think about the insanity of this whole thing. I just believe that I'm saved. Okay, you don't call upon the name of the Lord. Okay, then what do you do when you start praying? See, they're being saved according to their own mind. I have put my faith, my belief in Jesus Christ without ever calling upon Him. Without ever calling to, to God the Father and saying, God, please save me. Have mercy on me, a sinner, like the publican did. But the Pharisee, and he's saying, I'm glad I'm not like this publican over here, this sinner. And the publican is over there, and he's standing there, and he has his head cast down, and he's saying, he couldn't even look up to heaven. And he says, God, be, he smites upon his breast, and he says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said, in essence, that that publican was the one that was justified. He was saved. The other man was lost. The uh, Pharisee that believed that he was a good man and a good person. He had beliefs in his head. But the publican humbled himself before God and cried out to the Lord and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I'm going to tell you something. You have to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Why? Because that's what Romans chapter 10 says. And if you cut that part of the Scriptures out and you say, well, it says call upon the name of the Lord, but it actually means believe, or uh, actually that's for the saints in the time of Jacob's trouble, or whatever else, then you are distorting the Scriptures. It's in the Pauline epistles, people. It lines up with other Scriptures. You say, but it's, you know, why would you refer to the Old Testament? Well, because of verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. If you call upon the Lord in truth, if you are truly there and you're, and you're being genuine and saying, God, please save me, what's he going to do? Oh, I'm sorry, that's uh, for a different dispensation. Uh, well, sorry, um, you're calling upon me, but uh, it was just belief. <laughs> Satan is extremely subtle. And what Satan will do is he will come along and he will say to you, that word that you have in there, it's not what it actually means. I'll tell you what it means. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are preachers out there that use the King James Bible and they hold to the pre-trib rapture, pre-time Jacob's trouble catching away, and they're dispensational and they sound really good. They sound really good. But you watch them and they'll write words on the, or they'll say words and they cross them out and they say, that's not actually what it means. You're dealing with somebody who has the spirit of Satan. Yea, hath God said. Let me change this up for you a little bit. Now you show me one time when I've ever done that. When I've ever told you that a word in your King James Bible actually means something completely different than what it plainly says. You show me one time when I've done that. I will bend over backwards to make myself line up with the words of this book and I will never, ever change anything that's in here. You need to watch out. Watch out for preachers or anybody that comes out and says, well, it says, call upon the name of the Lord, but it's actually believe. It's not what the Bible says. Call upon the name of the Lord. That's when your life of prayer begins. When you call out to your Father for the very first time and He answers your prayer, you're saved. You're born again. Now talk to me. You make contact, make the first initial contact with the Lord and you say, God, please save me. I'm a sinner. Please save me. And He saves you. 
and that relationship begins then. So for these people to come along and they say, you better not pray. Why is that? You're dealing with very, very, very wicked people. People that seek to change the plain teachings of this King James Bible. Be very careful who you're listening to.